Now I'm going to cover Article 16 through 32, all of the capital articles for the community. Uh, I've seen capital plans that have just been one article, but for, for whatever reason, probably just transparency so that everybody can go through the articles individually, uh, this community breaks them up, which is fine. But Article 16 is to replace two police cruisers. They're on a rotating schedule to um, get rid of police cruisers as they age. And there's a combination of both miles and years of use. And then we trade those vehicles in. The funding source to buy these police cruisers is free cash. And if anyone has questions on these articles, we ask that you either call my office or send an email and we can get back to you with information ahead of uh, the meeting. So we, the main purpose of this presentation is to do just that, is to provide you with information and to ask you to call us if you have questions prior to town meeting. So the fire department, there's a replacement of uh, Rescue One. It's a 2004 rescue pumper, which is overtasked and overloaded and overused. And the fire chief is recommended to purchase a new one. These are not cheap, obviously. And so it will take a combination of free cash and borrowing to make this purchase. And I'll tell you that the Appropriation Committee and the Financial Planning Committee both have uh, public meetings that you can watch on demand, on cable, to see the presentations from the chiefs on these articles. Actually, all these articles went through those committees, so you can watch those in detail if you chose. DPW request. Uh, we obviously have a facilities division that started two years ago, and we want to keep up with HVAC systems, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning units are aging and need to be repaired and or replaced. So we have an allocation using free cash to do just that. Uh, Article 19, this has been an ongoing discussion through the Financial Planning Committee, the Select Board, and Appropriations Committee. And it started out as a simple paint job that turned into replacing some boards that turned into needing to uh, make the building weather tight with a material, we're not sure on the material yet, but a siding material that will be an industrial grade that will protect this building from the elements for the next, we hope, 20 to 25 years or maybe longer. Wood is never a good choice for a municipal building. Um, and if you do have wood, you need to maintain it more often than this appears to have been maintained in the past. So we are looking for $540,000. Uh, 70 is already existing, and we're reducing one of our capital items for a hook truck inside a DPW, which I think was $330,000. We're gonna just pass over that article, that's zeroed out, and I'll get to that in a minute. And we're looking to, to go out to bid, competitively bid under state procurement, uh, the siding of this building to make it weather tight and uh, you know help the aesthetics too it doesn't the building does not look great from the road either and we think that the aesthetics are important to the community but making it weather tight is the critical piece article 20 is similar uh, this is a brick building but brick is porous or at least the um, joints are and it's starting to take water so we want to reseal and repoint that brick so that's what this article does. The funding is from free cash. It's for $80,000. And then this highway request, obviously you have a pretty good road pavement management index, and it's, I think it's an 81, and we want to maintain that. So there's a certain amount of general fund money, there's chapter 90 money, and then there's free cash to go into your road maintenance account that you'd pave and do road maintenance with. And this is funding from free cash to augment those other two revenue sources so you can have a robust um, road improvement and maintenance program for DBW. And then this public health trailer, I think it's just aged out inside and they're going to repurpose this one but purchase a new one. And that's a picture of it on the screen. Again, m more detail from Scott Charpentier who has taken this over from a DPW perspective in terms of running this particular project on Article 22. Sidewalk and drainage improvements. These are 
Anything that's under the ground or above the ground from a walking perspective that we want to repair, it's again a $300,000 program. So we're going to fund this from overlay surplus. Overlay surplus is money that was set aside or is set aside in every fiscal year's budget to deal with uh, exemptions and abatements and anybody contesting their tax bill. So usually corporations will, will come to us and argue the value that we've come up with from the assessor's perspective. And so that overlay can be released from time to time by the Board of Assessors if, it, if they know they're not going to be challenged at the appellate tax board. And so those funds have been released, 600,000 have been released. We're using 300,000 here for this purpose. Uh, bucket truck, 330, again, it's a DPW project. And again, we encourage folks to call with questions for this, but we are looking to purchase a new uh, bucket truck to replace a 2010 model. And this is just part of our rotating stock of, of DPW equipment that needs to be refreshed from time to time. So it's 14 or 15 years, depending on the lead time, and free cash is the source for this bucket truck. So obviously the service levels inside of DPW to call for the need for a bucket truck like tree trimming and cutting down trees, and that's what this is used for. Uh, to replace a sidewalk plow, again, it's overlay surplus, $300,000 to, to provide a replacement of a 2012 model to plow the sidewalks into is a snow blower apparatus on the front of this picture. Again, something we need to maintain and buy new so we can continue to provide that service of keeping the sidewalks clear. 26 was 330, was zeroing it out. We had a lot of discussions with the moderator relative to keeping it in, not keeping it in. It could have been deleted, but it would have changed the numerics of the articles. Uh, one thing we learned is next time we create a warrant, we will not put numbers. We'll just put the article in, and then we, when we adjust them, then we'll assign numbers when it's, when it's completely done. That's just an aside note, but this will be passed over. Uh, this is really a utility truck that uh, Public Works had asked for and we wanted to support initially until we knew we had a greater need at the police department to redo the siding. So we eliminated this and put that money towards the siding at the police station in the previous articles. So within DPW, there's water and sewer, and these are capital requests that are funded by Enterprise Fund retained earnings. So this is a one-ton utility truck with a plow. It's $140,000. This talks about the funding sources, but it's basically split amongst Enterprise Fund's free cash or their fund balance. So that's what that um, is talking about on this particular slide. And then inflow and infiltration, we just we want to fix the pipes that are underground where we can and keep that water out because we pay for that water that gets into the storage system through water. We pay for that when it goes to the city of Marlboro. So we want to keep that number from a gallons perspective down. And if we can fix these pipes as we go, that's what this $380,000 does for fiscal 25. And then the school department request, uh, Peasley uh, Elementary is a chimney that they want to encapsulate the asbestos around that chimney for a cost of 30,000 and we're looking at free cash to fund that. And then article 30 is the uh, Millican Middle, Middle School. It's a hot water system upgrade of 30,000. It's obviously an older boiler system for a hot water system so they want to replace that. And again, with these school articles, uh, I'm only giving you the 10,000 foot level. If you have particular questions on these, I encourage you to call the superintendent and, and ask him particular questions about the need and the cost. And then pneumatic controls um, for their heating and ventilation system inside Millican is a $72,000 cost. Uh, these things are important because you want to control the temperature, you want comfort for the, the students and for the teachers, but they're also cost savings, right? If you cannot have heat running all night long when you don't need it. That's, uh, that's what these controls should and will do. Uh, and then the feasibility, feasibility study for our, uh, Peasley Elementary, 900,000. We're in the queue for an MSBA funding, Mass School Building Assistance funding. 
and they usually fund between 50 and 52 percent of any of these particular feasibility studies. So while we'll be authorized to borrow 900,000, we will be borrowing that much or just showing the state that we're willing to, and that's why this article is important because if we don't do it, then we don't get in the queue to have a reimbursable grant to do the study, and then whatever the study yields for our project, we want the state to fund that as well. So this is just a step along the way. And again, for this particular piece, I encourage you to call the superintendent of schools for particular information if you have questions.